Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. I'm gonna be honest, this feels a little bit like a momentous occasion. Uh, I have been doing YouTube for a year and a half and have been watching it for six, seven, eight years and never thought that as a YouTube creator I would at one point be making a video talking about how YouTube changes and policies are affecting my channel. It's weird, right? Like, we're big enough now that I have an audience that is impacted by them, and, and I myself are impacted by them. You clicked on this video because I titled it something along the lines of, Why are there so many ads on YouTube? Something like that. I'll find a title that encourages you to, you to click. Um, I didn't think I'd be making this video. I, I'll be honest, my plans as of four or five hours ago, it's about 5 a.m. right now, my plans were to sit down. Sunday is when we do more experimental con content. And so I just got in uh, the lone wolf that one of uh, the, the viewers on this channel recommended. So I was reading through this to figure it out. Uh, and I also already had from Van Ryder Games these uh, RPG Choose Your Own Adventure comic books. Um, and so my, legitimately, my plan today was to do a RPG comic book video. Didn't know if you were going to receive it well. I thought I would just sit down and read and play a game with you. But a change has happened here on YouTube over the last few weeks uh, that's been on my mind quite a bit. Um, and recently, with a private video that we put up on the Patreon, we had a few comments talking about it. Uh, and while there's not an echoing demand of needing something to be addressed, I, I personally think it's about time that I bring up the conversation here in the board game community, because I've seen channels talk about it. Some channels have mentioned it on Twitter, other people have been asking questions in some of the Facebook groups that I'm a part of, but I haven't seen a content creator directly sit down and address what's happening on our platform, and why and how it impacts us as board game media channels. So I thought I'd have an honest conversation with you and I have numbers, specific numbers to talk about. Why are there so many ads on YouTube? As of right around three weeks ago, YouTube did a thing where they decreased the length a video needs to be in order to have mid-roll or monetization ads added to it. It went from 10 minutes down to eight minutes. Along with that, they if you didn't opt out specifically, they auto-enabled their own ad placement on every single historic video that meets those qualifications and every single video that you post from this point out. And as a channel that produces content that is over eight minutes, I think almost every single time, that means that all of our historical historic videos uh, and every video that I put out from now on without me manually adjusting or changing, automatically has, has self-placed YouTube advertisement in it. Mid-roll ads based off of what YouTube thinks is appropriate, which ultimately comes down to YouTube making as much money as they can off of your viewership. And I, across the board, don't enjoy mid-roll ads. In fact, about two years ago or so, I was forced into getting a YouTube Red subscription specifically because I watch so much YouTube on my phone and they create barriers for you enjoying the content other people are creating if you're not in their program or not using a ad blocker. And so I don't see the ads. I'm going to be honest. I, I, you know, I keep that subscription because I use this platform so much that not having the app stop playing when you cycle out of it on your phone or having ads interrupt every few minutes of a video is is mentally draining. And for the first year and four months on our channel, we didn't run ads, especially mid-roll ads, across the board. Now, we did start placing some mid-roll ads about a month and a half, around March, when I, when I was forced to go full-time into this as a career, uh, we did begin experimenting with mid-roll ads, and I'll address why we did that, what the results are that we saw, um, and why it's important to have this conversation with you, the audience. Uh, but this new adaptation means that instead of me making a choice on a video to go in and every 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes 
place an ad that isn't too intrusive, that doesn't distract too much from the programming. Uh, instead, now YouTube, unless I manually do something, will decide that, well, maybe every five minutes we should have an ad. I put up a video that was maybe 20 minutes long, 19 minutes long for the Patreon community, and, and three of the comments, uh, while enjoying and watching and engaging with the content, three of the comments were talking about the fact that I should probably, with a conversational and sensitive subject, reduce the amount of mid-roll ads I had. And I thought to myself, well, darn, I finished this video at 6 a.m. I uploaded it, set it to go live at a certain point so I could share it with my community, uh, and went to bed because I was darn tired, because I'd been editing all night, because I try to produce videos every single day. Uh, and without it even crossing my mind, of course, there were self-placed ads in that video. And that's, that's inconvenient. Uh, so, of course, the easy solution would be turn off all ads, period, on the channel, right? Well, that's not also, that's not a good, it's not a good answer. I have my note card here. I figure we'll, we'll begin this conversation. Let's talk about why there's, first off, so many ads across YouTube as a platform and how it directly impacts us, board gamers and board game media channels. First off, uh, like I said, that sweeping policy is affecting every single channel on YouTube, and not only future videos, but every single historic video. So if you've recently found that there is an influx of advertisement on channels that you like, enjoy random videos that you find, just everything you're spending a time on, uh, that's the reason why. I don't know how public it was. I certainly didn't see a lot of people talking about it. <clears throat> But that's, uh, that's what YouTube's done, along with decreasing the mark where ads start. Uh, here's, here's, here's part of the conversation, right? We began experimenting with mid-roll ads uh, in March. I was forced to go full-time into this field, and I have numbers to back up what I'm going to say. The easy solution would be for us to turn off mid-roll ads across the board. But there's two core reasons why that just isn't genuinely isn't a reasonable or good uh, decision for us as a channel. First reason is, um, we now, this is my only sole income. The Patreon support that I get, uh, you know, uh, contracts and things that I get for, for commercial work, um, and then the revenue we get from YouTube. And while Patreon and contracts are a, a more significant, uh, substantial part of the income, YouTube has grown to be a point where you know, we earn a decent amount from this platform. Um, nothing compared to the work that we put in, but every bit helps, especially due to the way my life has shifted over the last three months or so. Um, before we were doing mid-roll ads at all, oh, and let me bring on the second point. So the first point is the income. Uh, that's, uh, and I have direct numbers to tell you, to talk to you about. The second point is because mid-roll ads pay five times the amount on average, then front-end ads or back-end ads or anything like that, YouTube pushes your content because it makes money off of your content. The same motivation that's built into uh, the, the idea of them adding ads everywhere. YouTube wants to make money. And oftentimes I feel at the expense of the creators uh, and the expense of the viewers. Um, it's been a historic thing here on YouTube, right? Not, I mean, I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir if you've been a fan of this platform for an extended period of time. Uh, this has always been an element that is a constant struggle and war. YouTube really not investing, more investing in mainstream media outlets and not investing in the people who've created the platform itself. That's a wider discussion for a different time. But here in this case, I have the numbers to back up not only the income that we're generating, but also the amount that YouTube will push our channel. Um, and that's important. We're a small, growing channel trying to expand in the board game space, doing everything we can, working 70 hours a week to create content. Uh, and the reality is, if we do not play the game that YouTube wants us to play, we will be punished for it. Uh, we will not be shared, we will not get as many impressions, we will not pop up onto people's feeds. If we don't have some degree of monetizable, you know, monetization within our programming, uh, YouTube doesn't care to share our content. Why would they? They, of course, would like to make sure that they can make as much money as possible off of everything that we're doing. Uh, so, let's dig in. Let's start with, uh, let's start with the numbers. 
back when we posted our Frost Haven coverage, um, before we started doing mid-roll ads, uh, we, you know, we had Frost Haven, we had Oath, we had footage like that that went up. We were getting about 80 to 100,000 views per period during that time, and we were doing front roll ads only uh, for the same exact reason, because front roll ads increase the amount that YouTube is willing to share and put out your content. It was something that was shared with me with other creators, um, and so we listened to wiser people than ourselves and decided to try it out. Uh, at that point, point, we were making about $120 um, a month off of YouTube for about 100,000 views. Uh, since then, in the last 28 days, um, our income uh, with mid-roll ads now included in our programming, uh, and with about 170,000 views, we've increased not only production, but also um, are generating just more historic views across the board. We've made uh, $550 through YouTube in the last 28 days. Um, and I know some other content creators, even in this space, that get close to the same amount of views as me that maybe have a longer retention rate, um, and, and they generate, you know, even two times the amount that I'm making. Uh, and so, um, that's a noticeable amount of money, you know, for if I wasn't, if this wasn't my only point of income, uh, I would, I would likely listen to the audience that says, hey, turn them all off, period, um, and, or restrict them to a point where, like, they're just not noticeable at all. Um, the reality is, though, that that uh, amount of money, while small compared to the amount of time and work that we put into the programming here, uh, still does uh, genuinely make a difference. Um, and so turning them all off entirely, um, I don't I don't think is a good solution. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to listen to my audience. I'm willing to listen to my Patreon community. Um, at the end of the day, that community is what supports and funds and has been since we went full-time in March. Um, but being able to have multiple streams of revenue and be, being able to have um, just income coming from a few different sources is, is fairly important, um, especially if uh, I want to maintain and, and move out of my parents' house at some time, at some point, right? Like, I didn't... I didn't really intend to be here, um, so I'm working as hard as I can to get this up and running as quickly and efficiently as I can, so that I can so that I can continue doing it and and do it legitimately, um, without cutting too many corners. Uh, as well, I told you about impressions. Back in the day, we were getting about, you know, 0.9 to 1 million impressions a month. Uh, that means those impressions are not only through our subscriber base, seeing our videos, our thumbnails, and things, but also from uh, YouTube specifically, about 50, 40 to 50 percent of those were from YouTube saying, hey, someone might like your content, we're going to put it up on the side scroll of their feed, or we're going to put it on their front page, or we're going to share it on our, you know, you might like this page, right? All those little videos that you didn't expect to go down the rabbit, you know, the rabbit hole on YouTube, that is what those are. Uh, at this point, now that we've turned on mid-roll ads, uh, over the last 28 days, we've received 2 million impressions same percentile, uh, about 50% of those are YouTube driven, about 50% of those are generated from us and our own audience sharing and, and, and things like that. We have more content out. Um, but both of those numbers are noticeable increases in how YouTube is responding to our programming uh, and how YouTube is sharing and, and pushing our programming here on the platform. Um, the other question is, is income full-time? Multiple revenue sources is going to be necessary for us to be able to secure a position here. Um, you know, there's some YouTube channels that have have giant Patreons. There's some YouTube channels that do direct sponsorship. There's some that do a hybrid of them all. If we were able, if the board game industry at all was able to be big enough that we could conceivably get 500,000 subscribers and have sponsorships from, I don't know, Lipton Tea... Uh, and, and get paid to have internal sponsorships or ad reads that we do here on the channel, well, then the conversation would be a little bit different as well. Um, that's also just not a reality for board game channels or board game media channels. Our space, we, we, have, we have a small space. We have to create and support and share each other. Um, so that's the, that's the balance. The, the, the chance of being directly monetized, uh, extremely low. Um, the reality is... Uh, YouTube, YouTube videos with mid-roll ads are about five times as valuable and get pushed uh, at least twice as much by YouTube as a platform itself. 
Um, and for a channel that is trying to create and grow and put out the best content we can, those numbers and that game is something we have to be paying attention to and something that we have to be playing in. Uh, five times income, impressions, solutions. So here's the... Here's the thing that we're trying to get through. Here's the thing that's been on my mind. I don't like mid-roll ads either. Um, and I will be doing as, you know, the very best I can to uh, timestamp my videos and go through after a video has been uploaded and processed because I can't control mid-roll ads until after the video has been processed and sometimes till after it's been posted just due to the way our schedule works. So I will be going through and trying to manually adjust and control this as much as I can, to whatever degree I can. Um, but sometimes, if I have a video going out at 10 in the morning, and I've been edit editing till 7 in the morning, uh, sometimes I will go to sleep. Um, believe me, I still do that every few days. Um, but I, I really just wanted to have a conversation. I wanted to provide some numbers. I wanted to talk about the change that's happened here on the platform, talk about how it might be affecting us as a community, and the wider board game content creators as a community as a whole. Um, and also talk about solutions. If you have YouTube Red, that's going to be the solution for being on your phone and on the computer. I know being forced into a payment system sucks. Unequivocally, it sucks. They've created a system where to get what you want, you're forced to pay into it. But that still does pay out to creators. It still does provide dividends and it gives you some, you know, gives you some bonuses that are valuable. Um, if you watch on your phone predominantly, that's probably going to be the best solution you have. If you watch on your computer, uh, there are other, you know, ad, uh, ad services that remove them across the board. And I don't know that I can um, encourage you to use those, but I do know they exist. And I do know in the past I have used them and decided to enable them or disable them on different content creators based on what I want to watch and how I want to enjoy and consume my media. Um, so both of those are totally viable and leg legitimate options. Uh, and if ads annoy you, I would encourage you to at least definitely support one of them. Uh, but that's, I mean, that's sort of, that's sort of the video. It's sort of the conversation I wanted to have. Um, I don't, I don't like, I don't like the current policy. I don't like how it's changed. I don't like the fact that it went through and updated every single historic video I and everyone else has. Um, I don't like it when YouTube auto places ads in my videos um, because when they do that, uh, they oftentimes do way too many. It is certainly not me placing. If you see, if it feels like a video is spamming you with ads, uh, that, is, that is YouTube and not me, which sucks. In fact, I might, I might leave... Should leave should leave mid roll ads on for this video just to see how much YouTube spams you with them. That would be interesting. If you're watching this without an ad blocker, and you made it to this point, let me know how many ads did you have to sit through in order to see all of this content? Because because I I don't I don't know I don't I don't see them directly. Um, yeah, that's a thing. That's a conversation. If you're excited about uh, some RPG storytelling, you're hanging out with me and, and going through a book, you know, going on a, a little bit of adventure, I mean, look at, look at the lovely art. Uh, and this one's, this one's, I'm still not sure how I feel about this one. The writing's, you know, the writing seems interesting, but there's a lot of words in it. And I don't know how I'm going to cover that effectively on camera, but flavor text is my favorite mechanic, so I'm sure I'll find a way. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know how you engage with our content. Let me know if my um, assumptions and, and the way that I'm approaching this is reasonable. Uh, or if you hate what I'm saying and you'd rather unsubscribe. You know, we're doing the very best we can. Um, this, is a, this is a weird... This has been a weird few months. And I am, I am working hard and doing the very best I can. And at the end of the day... Um, at the end of the day, I have to figure out how to, um, I have to figure out how to make this a career, uh, and make this a community, and make this something that I can legitimately continue to do for as long as possible. And so sometimes playing within the games or the structures that we're given is, uh, something that we have to do. I don't know. I don't know. That's a thing. It's a video. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you haven't. What a, what a terrible conversation to have.
Thank you for watching. Uh, and I'll see you on the next one.